Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, then my name is Alexandria or Alex and welcome to my channel. This video is a video that I've actually been wanting to make for a while. I have a list of videos that I've wanted to make in my notes and this is one of them, but I feel like now it's even more relevant and just kind of the perfect time to make it. So as you probably tell that by the title, this video is gonna be a lot more serious than the majority of my normal videos. The purpose of this video is just to educate people, I'm literally just speaking facts, facts that I have found and trying to educate people on what is flawed in the education system with medicine, nursing and other healthcare professions and why that needs to change. So before I begin, please go in the, the description box and have a look at the Black Lives Matter link for all the petitions you can sign. Have a look at the link about health disparities in maternity care between black and white women and the one about changing medical textbooks. All of these are related to what I'm going to talk about. So when I'm talking about racial health care disparities, I'm talking about a lot of different things. This can cover maternity care, mental health care, dermatology, all sorts of things and I think dermatology is probably the biggest one. If you don't know what dermatology is, dermatology is just a field around skincare so that can be eczema, acne, all sorts of skin conditions or anything that shows up on your skin or symptoms that show up on your skin of a different illness and, and that can also involve a lot of immune diseases so a lot of immune diseases do cause redness or rashes that flare up on your skin. And I would also like to point out before I do begin that this is not just an American issue. You see a lot of videos of people being mistreated or black people being mistreated in American hospitals or by American healthcare professionals. This is not just an American issue. This happens all over the world and it happens in the UK as well. And I'm going to go into the proof as to how that does happen in the UK. According to the MB, MBRRACE, don't really know what that stands for. Um, in 2019, they found out that black women in the UK are five times more likely to die during pregnancy or postpartum, so after they've given birth, than white women. If that doesn't ring alarm bells in your head, then I don't really know for you. Five times. And according to the Confidential Inquiry into Maternal Deaths and Morbidity, from 2015 to 2017, the chance of maternity death for black women was 38 out of 100,000, but for white women it was only 7 out of 100,000. Now that may not seem like that big of a disparity, but considering black women are five times more likely to die during maternity than a white woman, you can put that into perspective, that is shocking. I'm going to go into the reasons why this is apparent later but I just want to get all the facts out there first so that people can kind of understand what is really going on in the UK healthcare system at the moment. Moving on to dermatology, um, this is specifically more so for paediatrics. There is a disease that not many people really know about, it's called Kawasaki disease. It is an immune disease that was found in Japan so it's quite common in Japanese children and it happens around children generally under the age of five, but around that kind of early primary school age. And it's an immune disease that can cause redness, swelling, redness in the eyes, redness in the periphery, so like here. And if it's not treated, it can cause heart issues that can be fatal. So it can be really serious if it's not picked up earlier. So obviously because a lot of the symptoms of Kawasaki disease do show up on your skin, if you are darker, it is very hard to be able to diagnose Kawasaki disease because the rash is more obvious and clear to see and easier to diagnose on a child who is lighter. So that's why for a lot of black children or South Asian children or just generally darker skinned children, it is nearly impossible, unless you are very, very skilled in what you do, to be able to pick up those symptoms and diagnose it. And if you aren't able to do that or if you're not taught how to do that in medical school in nursing school how to pick up these symptoms that could kill a child so this is why the education around healthcare needs to be much more inclusive because if you can't spot symptoms in a darker person that you can you've only been taught to see in a lighter child that is where the morbidities come from for people from ethnic minorities and particularly black people and that is not okay I'm also going to insert a picture of the difference between Kawasaki disease and a black child and a white child so you can really see how serious this can be and how it's nearly impossible to see 
that a black child has Kawasaki disease so you can see that I'm not just chatting rubbish. Another example of the kind of disparity between different skincare conditions in different skin colours is eczema. Most people have eczema, it's a very common skin condition but as you can see here it looks a lot different in black and white people so it is a lot harder to diagnose specifically what that is and if you can't find the cause to something it can obviously get worse if something goes undiagnosed or mistreated then it's just going to end in disaster and that is too common in the black community and it just needs to stop some more kind of general things so pallor which is paleness you can't see paleness in someone that's dark skinned like if someone was to completely lose color that is way more obvious to see in a white person or a lighter skinned person it just doesn't make sense to why you would put that as a really obvious sign for an illness when you can't see it in a black person and if someone's completely lost their color or they they're about to faint or their blood sugar levels are really low and they just drop you can see that in someone before they faint if they're lighter that they go white before they black out you can't see that in a black person so how are you supposed to know what the problem is if you're not taught how to spot it in someone that's got darker skin this needs to be talked about in education paleness doesn't look like typical paleness in a black person we only get taught about paleness in white people and really light-skinned people we don't get taught about what that looks like in black people so how are you supposed to treat or diagnose something if you don't know what it looks like in a dark-skinned person also rhubarb so rhubarb is redness most well, dark-skinned people don't you can't see redness or flush or flush in their skin that's just how it works if you have darker skin if you're pale even like me you can see what my ring light is hot it's making me go red you can't see that in darker skinned people if someone was to be flushing or they had an infection they're going red or signs of inflammation where their skin is going red you can't see that in a dark skinned person so how are you supposed to treat the issue if you can't see it it takes a lot longer to investigate things internally so you a lot of the time in healthcare you rely on the external factors the external symptoms especially as a nurse so how are you supposed to do that if you can't see that because you you're not taught how to look at that with someone with darker skin it just it just doesn't make any sense it's just a recipe for disaster and that's what's been going on from the beginning of time and lastly in terms of dermatology cyanosis cyanosis can be fatal and that is when you go blue so a lot of the time it's shown in the lips or the peripheries so fingers and your toes and that is just a like loss of oxygen or that your it just signifies that your oxygen levels are going down obviously if you're hooked up to a machine then you'll be able to see that someone's oxygen levels are going down and that their saturation is not as high as it should be how how are you expected to act on that really quickly if you can't see it if you can't see that this person is desaturating that their oxygen levels are going down rapidly that could be the diff that really could be the difference between life and death and that is scary that we're not fully taught how to spot that in people of different races and something just needs to change and i'm i'm gonna keep reinforcing this point because it's just it's just awful i'm gonna insert another picture as well like I just had to insert proof of everything because the difference is just crazy. So now I've kind of talked about like maternity and dermatology, you can kind of see how obvious the disparities are. I've seen it myself. When I was on placement, I saw a few kids with Kawasaki disease and with the darker children, it is, is a lot harder. It takes them a lot longer to diagnose what the problem is. And that can be a huge problem because you're left with parents guessing patients guessing they don't know what's wrong with them and that gives the disease more time to get worse and more time for the patient to deteriorate which is life-threatening now i kind of want to answer the question of why this happens i think it's pretty obvious why this happens the healthcare system in itself as an institution as a lot of institutions are do have a lot of underlying systemic racism. We're built, we're in a country that is built on systems that were created by racism. Not saying that everybody is racist because obviously a lot of people come into healthcare professions because they want to help everybody regardless of their gender, sexual orientation, race, whatever. But a lot of individual people are the problem. If you've got one racist doctor, 
who doesn't have time for the black people on the ward wants to just chuck pills at them misdiagnose them not listen to them when they're in pain you've got a racist midwife who's not listening to a black woman that's in in pain in excruciating pain and just thinks that she's being melodramatic and then she goes and dies in childbirth that's that one person that's making that big of a difference and that one racist person is causing someone to lose their life and people are just getting away with it and it is it is so apparent sometimes it's not obviously racist but it is racist and the way we're taught is racist in the sense that we're not specifically taught to spot signs of redness in a black person or cyanosis in a black person because it's not like the curriculum for everything is just so white it's so european it's the way that we're taught to just center everything around people who are lighter and it just doesn't make any sense because there are people of all different shades and we're trying to save the lives of everybody so how are we supposed to do that if we don't know what we're looking for what signs we're looking for in people with darker skin and also this goes on to mental health as well um a lot of the time a lot of black people are scared to come forward to mental health services because they feel like they're not going to be listened to they feel like they're not going to be believed that people are going to think they're being melodramatic which is the case in a lot of scenarios and even a lot of gps for both physical and mental health reasons if you go to them they might just throw pills at you and try and shut you up with the problem because they're just going to assume that you think that they know it all so they'll just give you some pills and assume that they're solving the problem that's happened to me as well i've had a gp literally just say oh i don't really know what's wrong with you but i'm just going to give you this anyway or it's it's bad but it's not that bad like what are you trying to tell me why can't you just give me a straight answer instead of making me put matters into my own hands you're the gp i'm the patient the thing is it's not even coming from racist white people as well it comes from other people of color that particular in the particular instance i've had with discussing physical and mental health with a gp at my local practice that gp was a person of color is a person of color and so it's about changing the attitudes of everybody and making sure that people are inclusive to everyone regardless of their race, regardless of their skin colour, because everybody's entitled to healthcare. So we should all be able to get equal access to the services, be treated equally, because this is how our people are dying. This this is how it is just... It all starts from education. Universities need to do like serious background checks on people. I'm not even gonna lie. They do enough background checks. They do this, the DBS check. They check, you know, those kind of things if you have a criminal record but they need to check if people are racist or not because i don't know how they would do that but they need to because you can't have racist people in such positions of power or in such professions where you're dealing with people's lives people need to also change education textbooks the way we're taught needs to be inclusive so we can specifically learn about how different diseases affect different races different skin tones because there are a lot of diseases that do more so affect a certain race. Like, for example, sickle cell disease is more common in Afro-Caribbean people than it is in white people, or Asian people or whatever. So we need to be taught more about that. We need healthcare education, medical education to be more inclusive. And for people who aren't even studying a healthcare degree, you need to be educated about these things because if you go to a doctor and you explain you're having issues whether that be physically or mentally you know yourself you're the only person that knows yourself if something's not right they should be listening to you and they shouldn't automatically believe that you're over exaggerating push if they're trying to just throw pills at you and not fully investigate what's wrong with you push for more answers push for more tests push for a different diagnosis push to see a different doctor because it's not right and report people if they do if they say things that aren't nice to you if they treat you differently to other people you because we need to get these people out of practice if people aren't doing their job properly they don't deserve to be practicing they don't deserve to be helping people when really they're putting certain people and minorities in danger it's a serious issue and i just feel like i needed to come on here and just educate people more about why it is a problem and why 
we need to do better to make sure that people have better and equal access to care and equal treatment when they are being treated by the NHS because the NHS is a beautiful thing and I'm very proud to be a part of it. However, there are a lot of flaws within the system as there are with every system and they, they, these need to be changed. So don't be complacent if you feel like someone is being unfair to you. No, just know your rights, know what you're doing. I've been going on and on in this video, but it needed to be said. I just feel like it's it's just, it's gone on for too long. People, like health is just such a delicate thing. You only have one short at life. And if one racist healthcare professional, whether that be a doctor, a nurse, a physio, a midwife, is gonna try and ruin that for you, even if it's not intentional, even if it's just their unconscious bias towards you as a person of colour, you can't stand for that. And sometimes, obviously, there's not much you can do, especially if you're particularly vulnerable or you're in a really serious state. But we need to be more aware of it. And I'm hoping that this video kind of opened a lot of people's eyes, whether that be the eyes of white people, the eyes of black people, or other people of um, ethnic minority backgrounds. Um, please share this video, please share it to as many people as you can because I just want to get the word out there about how important this is. Please don't forget to sign the petitions that I've linked in the description. And yeah, that's the end of the video. Um, I hope you learned something. Please let me know what you think. Um, yeah, bye.